The Times of Israel is reporting that Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas admits that he rejected the 2008 peace offer from the Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert. Interviewed separately by Israel Channel 10 TV News, both men described the negotiations as serious and said a peace deal was achievable. The talks occurred at a turbulent time. Olmert, then Prime Minister, was involved in a corruption scandal and had announced his intentions to step down. He was later convicted of some of these crimes and sent to seven years in jail. His appeal is still pending. Olmert says that he told Abbas, Remember my words. It will be 50 years before there will be another Israeli Prime Minister that will offer you what I am offering you now. Don't miss this opportunity. Olmert said he had offered a near total withdrawal from the West Bank, proposing that Israel will retain 6.3% of the territory in order to keep control of major Jewish settlements. He said he offered to compensate the Palestinians with Israeli land equivalent to 5.8% of the West Bank, along with a link to the Gaza Strip, another territory meant to be part of Palestine. Abbas said he also felt Olmert's offer to accept a symbolic number of Palestinian refugees into Israel did not resolve the issue. Abbas continued that descendants of Palestinian refugees, now numbers in the millions, are scattered across the region. Nonetheless, the Palestinian leader described the talks as the most serious negotiations since an interim peace accord was reached in 1993 under then Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. But is this the only time when the Palestinians missed an opportunity for peace? If we look back at peace negotiations between Israel and the PLO, the answer is no. In the summer of 2000, then US President Bill Clinton hosted intense peace talks at Camp David between Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat and Israeli leader Ehud Barak, culminating in a comprehensive peace plan known as the Clinton Parameters, which was similar to the later Olmert plan, though not quite as extensive. Despite the vast concessions that the plan required of Israel, Prime Minister Barak accepted President Clinton's proposal, while Arafat refused, returned home, and launched a new terror campaign against Israeli civilians known as the Second Intifada, in which thousands of Israelis and Palestinians were killed. According to Chief U.S. Negotiator Dennis Ross, Palestinian negotiators working for Arafat wanted him to accept the Clinton parameters, but he refused. When Ross was asked why, he said, Fundamentally, I do not believe that Arafat can end the conflict. We had one critical clause in this agreement, and that clause was that this is the end of the conflict. Current Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also held peace talks with the Palestinians in 2014. Tsipi Livni, who was then the foreign minister, came close to an agreement along with Palestinian chief negotiator Saeed Barikat. So what ended the talks? According to an extensive article in the July 2014 issue of the New Republic, it was the Palestinian president's decision to go into a unity government with Hamas, who at the time was launching missiles against Israel and calling for Israel's destruction. At the same time, however, Israel was expanding settlements, and considering the fact that Netanyahu's coalition was supported by right-wing settler political parties, it is unlikely that under those circumstances, an agreement would have been ratified. In 1973, Abba Evan, Israel's ambassador to the UN said, the Arabs never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. One wonders, what would the Middle East look like had Abbas agreed to Almert's offer? Would ISIS exist? Would Syria fall? Would the ongoing cycle of violence and senseless death in the Holy Land continue? Leaders must strive for greatness. It seems that Israeli and Palestinian leaders only strive for their political survival. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm Miguel Hecht.